Let's start with Ed Markey, questioning Alan Shaw, the CEO and president of Northfolk Southern. Will you commit to compensating effective homeowners for their diminished property values? Senator, pardon me, Senator, I'm committing to do what's right. Well, what's right is a family that had a home worth $100,000 that is now worth $50,000 We'll probably never be able to sell that home for 100000 again. Will you compensate that family for that loss? Okay. Okay. Senator, I'm committed to do what's right. That is term. the right thing to do. These are the people who are innocent victims, Mr. Shaw. These people were just there at home, and all of a sudden, their small businesses, their homes, are forever going to have been diminished in value. Norfolk Southern owes these people. This clip, uh, aside from the fact that the Norfolk Southern guy was like, absolutely going to do what's right. How we define that is really yeah. going to be a function of how much political pressure we get, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. What's right for me is what he meant. And what's what's the, right for us? And the stock valuation, which would go down if we said we were going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I mean, here's the point. And, and, and this is a little bit of a crass way of illustrating it. But this is a, pr a, pr a, a perfect illustration of how you have a private company that causes this type of rail accident or could have prevented it had they had more staff. Had they put more into, uh, not just into the braking, but if they had more people on staff, if they had better communication system, they had better safety, that would cost them money. So what they do is they, they cut those things to save themselves money. But they save themselves money, but the burden of that cost goes on, in this instance, to the people in Palestine, Ohio. It goes on in the, in the, in the form of, I may need health care down the road. I may need uh, uh, you know, I had, I've been living in terror for the past couple of weeks. I can't drink water or in the value of my house. This is a perfect illustration of how corporations without, without regulation, without enough regulation, what they do is they privatize the profits, they privatize the savings, those go to shareholders, and they socialize the costs. It goes on to individuals, other individuals and within our society and society will pay for it, right? Because we're going to end up having to pay for the health care for those folks in one form or another. Uh, their whole town is going to be uh, the, the, the value of their property is going to be less. I mean, this is going to immiserate a lot of people. And this is a prime example of that. There needs to be more regulation. And, uh, you know, the Biden administration needs to get on this, but there also has to be legislation for more mm -hmm. uh, for more uh, 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 regulation, here is someone who you can uh, be assured will probably vote against that regulation if there's an opportunity to pass it. Mm -hmm. However, it is uh, good that he um, uh, says these things, even though um, I wouldn't uh, trust his intentions more than uh, I could throw him. Uh, but. Here's a J.D. Vance in Ohio, um, at least talking a good game. I want to start by acknowledging the people of, of East Palestine and Anne at the Ohio EPA has done a great job on this tragedy and just say that I think that our leadership, our media and our politicians were slow to respond to this crisis in part because a certain segment of our leadership feels like the people of East Palestine are a little out of style. They have their own <sighs> politics. They're a little too rural, maybe a little too white. And I want to thank Shut Senator up. Capito mm -hmm. and, oh. and, 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 and Senator Carper, Sorry. Chairman Ranking Member, and all of you for paying attention to this, for caring about this issue and for showing leadership on it. I think the most important message to the people of East Palestine is that we will not forget about them in the months and years to come. And I think this committee hearing reinforces that message. So it's very personally meaningful for, for me to be here. Yeah, you mean like right. how well, you I'm forgot sorry. about them? I thought them? this was the clip where he was actually calling for more regulation. But yeah. the bottom line is the f some of the first people who were talking about this in the media before even he was, I think, on some level was like folks like AOC. Um, you yeah, know, he uh, forgot about them. He yeah, there was a he, pronounced he silence. To go away until and, and he's he like, was, yeah, we're working. Ten days Norfolk Southern it is took assuring him to us. put out a statement. <laughs> yeah, but at the very least, the he's media, covering though. his he's covering his ass. And he's trying to make it about uh, you know sort of conservative aggrievement again. 
But the bottom line is uh, the reason why people were quiet about it was because, first off, their home senators were not talking about it enough. Uh, we had a media that uh, was not uh, terribly interested in it. And, you know, he's out there uh, promoting uh, regulation, which I appreciate. But, you know, that garbage, I guess you got to put up with. I thought but that was a different uh, clip. The media, the media um, thing is like the, the media was slow to it because the political parties were both like hands off and didn't want to actually use it to make hay. Like like the the Biden administration, Republicans, and Buttigieg himself was saying, yeah, the, you know, crashes happen, and uh, and Ohio leadership, Vance and the governor were doing crap themselves. Reminder that the federal government wasn't called in for like almost two weeks. Because because uh, the media didn't tell him. Dewine about it. Dewine was uh, you know didn't didn't want to make a big deal of it. 